Hello, welcome to your video on probability, um, more specifically predicting probability. And by the end, you will be able to predict probabilities using experimental and theoretical probability. So how do you predict probability? That's the question. Um, I have here the experimental probabilities um, from when I tossed the coin in the last video. Um, so here we had the probability of heads and the probability of tails, theoretic, or sorry, experimentally. Um, and then obviously for both um, heads and tails, the theoretical is one half. Uh, and so I'm going to take that and find other probabilities. In other words, I'm going to predict probabilities. Um, so I'm going to use the theoretical for first. So using the theoretical probability, that's one out of two. Um, now that, and we'll talk about the probability for heads. Um, one out of two. If, let's say, I toss that coin um, ten times. So let's say now I want to find out what the theoretical probability would be out of 1,000 times. Um, so now I'm going to use... Um, proportions and to figure this out. Um, so I can go up and down or across, it doesn't matter. I'm going to go up and down. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So 1,000 divided by 2 is 500. So x is 500. In other words, 500 out of the 1,000 times, I should get the probability for heads. Um, I will next do experimental. And predicting with experimental um, is very much the same. I will do the probability of heads again, just to keep it simple. Um, and that was 4 out of 10, which reduced to 2 out of 5. So I'm going to use that number. It doesn't really num matter. Um, I could very easily use 4 tenths, too. So 2 out of 5 was my experimental probability. Now let's say I want to know what that would be if I did that a 1,000 times. Um, what would it be? So I'll go across this time. So 5 times what is 1,000? And that is times in by 200. So 2 times 200 would be 400. So there I can expect if I were to continue my experiment um, that 400 out of the 1,000 would be heads. Relative frequency is another word that you need to know, especially for your MCAs. Um, so what is it? It is how often something happens divided by the total outcomes. In other words, it's basically your experimental probability. It's just you'll see it written as a decimal. So please make note that it's written as a decimal. Um, and the other important piece is that all relative frequencies will add up to 1 when you're talking about decimals. How do I find relative frequency? Here's my example for you. Um, it basically think about it as finding experimental probability. Um, so 92 people were asked how they got to work. Um, so then my experimental or relative frequency would be 35 out of 92, and then 42 out of 92, 8 out of 92 people, and 7 out of 92 people. Now relative frequency is written as a Decimal. So I'm going to actually type in my calculator, 35 divided by 92 equals, and it's going to tell me 0 0.38, and I'm rounding here to decimal places um, for each of these. But you're just going to use your calculator to get those decimals, and then when you add all of these up, now the thing you have to keep in mind is if you're rounding, you might be off just a little tiny bit. Um, but relative frequency should add up to 1. So I have 0.38 plus 0.46 plus 0.09 plus 0.08. And when I do that, I end up getting 1.01. 1 .01. Um, and the reason for that is because of the rounding. So if you're off by just a hundredth of a point, um, that's fine. If you're off by a tenth, so if I had 1.1, um, that would be concerning. Um, but relative frequency should add up to 1 when you're using decimals um, or, or be extremely, extremely close. Your turn. You are going to put this on a Google form. 
Um, if the theoretical probability of getting a green Skittle is 1 out of 15, what is the probability when there are 60 Skittles? What would that probability be? Um, so make sure you're showing all your work on your paper and then put your answer on the Google form. Uh, this is the end of your video. Um, there will be a question on your Google form asking about my first pet. Um, my first pet was a dog, um, and it was actually her name was Ginger, and she was um, very, very, very energetic. So you will need that information on your Google form. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.